illustrations by Pete. So today I want to talk to you about the difference between automatic drawing and doodling. So I'm going to do, first I'm going to do an automatic drawing painting. Then I'm going to do, well, I guess it would just be an automatic painting. And then I'm going to do an automatic drawing. And then I'll do a doodle painting and then a doodle drawing. And then I'll show you a fifth uh, automa or doodle drawing that I did. And um, just because it inspired me and I'll tell you why. So I think people are a little confused what this means. That if you look on YouTube and I have searched the YouTube verse for as many different automatic drawing videos as I could. And they tend to look at it. This, they say the same things, or mostly the same things, but but what they're doing is different than what they're saying. So, automatic drawing is, um, matter of fact, I'm going to bring up the definition to automatic drawing, and that is, they call it surrealist automatism. Um, and basically, it says, is a method of art making in which the artist suppresses conscious control over the making process, allowing the unconscious mind to have great sway. Now, if you listen to people talk about it, they tend to talk about um, clear your mind of all conscious decisions. It, there's there's uh, rules to it. So, first you do that, you have to let your hand just move over the page. You don't consciously decide what to draw or paint. If you uh, start to recognize a shape or a pattern, you go to a different part of the drawing and just start randomly scribbling uh, in that section because you, you're not supposed to be thinking about what you're doing. And I've heard it called a form of meditation, but that's not true either. If you look at meditation, it means to... Uh, to contemplate or reflect on something. It's a, uh, it's to engage mentally. It's to focus your thoughts or uh, to reflect on something or to plan something. There's intent, there's purpose. When, when you talk about meditator, you can say um, you're meditating on something, like on a subject or a topic. Um, you're focusing or you're trying to like laser in focus on one thing but not be distracted by other things that's meditation you're focused on one thing so they say that but automatic drawing you're not supposed to focus on anything you're not supposed to think about anything clear your mind get rid of all thought completely and so um so here's what i did i i went ahead and said okay i will follow their rules and i did this uh, automatic painting and just grabbed whatever I didn't think about it grabbed a color put it on the page grabbed another color put it on the page same thing with the drawing I just took a pen and it was a pen that I love to draw with uh, if you've ever seen any of my other videos and um, I got a new ink for it it is the smoke on the water ink uh, it's diamine brand and um, it's a pretty color and I just said okay I'm gonna grab something that I like to draw with I'm going to go ahead and do it. And so I did an automatic drawing. Here's the thing. The number one thing they all talk about with automatic drawing, all these artists that I've, I've heard talk about it, is that it's supposed to increase your creativity and, and, and your artistic expression and your, your skill level. Well, I don't think it can do that because you're not focusing on anything. So you're just randomly doing something. You're not trying to develop any skill, which drawing and painting are, they're skills. Um, and I just, I don't think they do what people think that they're supposed to do. Now on the flip side, if you look at doodling and the painting that I do and the drawing that I do, you'll see me focus on areas. Now when, when I do a doodle, typically I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I don't have a picture in my mind of what the picture, the end result's going to be. But I know that if I just keep going, I'll see little things that I want to develop. So I'll draw a little shape and I'll say, oh yeah, okay, this shape, uh, maybe I want to put a shadow on it, put some hatching on it, some cross hatching. 
maybe I want to develop it in this way and I just um, and I continue down that road or, or just it's there are all decisions being made the entire time I'm, I'm consciously thinking about what I'm doing and that can expand your creativity that can expand your skill level because you can just start uh, pushing forward in a certain area and developing form and texture and um, I probably get more out of that than any other thing that I'm doing because it's a focused study on one particular thing. It's, it's something that I want to do um, with that thing, but it's not something that's recognizable necessarily. Sometimes it can be. If you think something looks like a, a planet or a spaceship or a um, you think it looks like fungus, or and I know that sounds funny, but Fungus is pretty inspiring when you're doing doodling. There's a lot of textures and things like that. If you look at fungus, you look at rocks, you look at sand. One of my favorite things to look at, and don't laugh at me when I say this, tile in the men's room when I go to a restaurant. I'm just staring at the wall anyway. So I look at the tile that's in front of me, and there's all these forms and shapes in it. And... It, it's strange. I think sometimes people think it's weird when they come in the, the bathroom and I have my phone out and I'm taking pictures of the wall, but it's okay. It, that's okay because I'm getting inspiration from that. And so anyway, it, when you do a doodle, and I think that's another thing. People like to call it automatic drawing because it sounds mystical and it sounds, you know, whatever. And doodle doesn't sound cool. It doodle if you say i'm a i'm a doodler it it sounds weird and i think i don't think people take that kind of an artist seriously so people artists don't like to say that i'm doodling they don't like to say that they like to say i'm i'm doing an automatic drawing even though what they're doing is actually doodling they're not doing the automatic drawing because if they're doing an automatic drawing it wouldn't expand their creativity they'd basically be thinking about nothing and so um and you can see from the drawing that i've done that it's terrible it, there's, it, there's, it's scribbled. There's nothing discernible at all. I, I didn't get anything out of it. I didn't develop any skill from it. I didn't develop any creativity from it. There's nothing that I got out of it personally. On the other hand, the doodle, I got plenty out of. I got a lot out of that. And so I'm going to continue to doodle, and that's what I like to do. And uh, it, to me, it's like a study. It's, it's if you do a bird study or you do a uh, portrait study or a landscape study, that's what a doodle is. It's an, a focused, intense study on form and shape and uh, could be hatching or stippling or anything else. It's just it's a focused study on that thing. Um, painting is the same thing. You, when you do a... Um, when you do a doodle that is painting wise, and, and the one that I did, it, it wasn't that great. It wasn't the best, but it was good enough where I did develop some shapes. You see me focus on certain areas and I really uh, went at certain spots that intrigued me and made it look similar to what I wanted it to look like in, towards the end. And um, in other parts, I, I didn't. I just put it on the paper and that was a form, a shape, or whatever, and a texture, and it just stayed there. And that's just it. But but you learn a little bit. Now, from the doodle, I learned a lot. And I ended up, at the end, you'll see, if you, if you watch all the way to the end, you'll see a separate picture of just the second doodle that I did, which was in a, uh, it was in a Stillman and Byrne Nova Gray book. And... That doodle was inspired by the one that I did in my Etcher sketchbook. And I, I, there were so many things I liked about it and the way that it came out that I wanted to do another one that looks similar to it, but I wanted to do it in a gray book because I like to add the, the contrast. I like to add the black and then the white and then have some gray in there as well. So it just gives it another dimension, um, just has that mid-tone added to it. So I, I like to use that book for that reason. And I changed some things and added a little bit extra texture and some extra forms and things like that. And I really like how it came out. Again, it's not the greatest thing in the world. I just enjoy doing that. 
I really like how it came out, and I encourage other people to do it. And I don't mind being the artist that doodles. That's okay, because I get a lot out of it. I enjoy doing that. So I hope you do, and if you've never tried that before, try it. If you, Anybody can do this. You can take, whether you're painting or drawing, you can put something on a paper and then develop form and shape around it. You can, you can splotch um, just ink droplets on a paper and then try and form it into something and add texture around it and form and shape it. It's, it's satisfying to me. I, I really enjoy it. I think you will too. I think you'll get a lot out of it if you want to do that. Um, but let me know if that's something that you do a lot of. And it doesn't have to be that kind of thing. Sometimes doodles look like something. Sometimes um, there's a couple of channels on here where people do uh, watercolor doodles or um, they do drawings. And, and the watercolor ones, they, they might put like a just a big egg-shaped spot of color and they turn it into a tree or something. It, it, it looks like, a, it almost looks like a, like an old wallpaper or maybe a new wallpaper. Or something like that. And it just, it looks nice. It has good, it just looks pretty. So, if you've never done it before, very simple. Try it and let me know how you like it. And I did this one a little bit different. It's a little bit more sped up. If you think that's a problem, please let me know. I want to know what you think about it. Um, uh, hopefully, it's easy to follow. If not, and you want me to slow it down a little bit, just let me know. I'm not sure I can watch it that fast. Some people can, some people can't, and some people don't like it that way. And really, these videos are for you, so if you don't like it that way, please let me know so that I can correct that and improve that in the future. You know, the thing about doodling is there is there are no rules surrounding it, so you can do it however you want to do it. You can, um, you can start with color first. If you want to mix things, that's fine. You start with color first, you start with the pen first, you start with um, anything. You want to use um, pastels or acrylics or oils. You can use anything and you can focus on any aspect of it. You can do anything. Here's a nice thing about it. No one knows what it's supposed to look like except for you. And, and you may not even know what it's supposed to look like when you start. But no one knows what that end result's going to be. So no one can say, hey, it came out wrong. And that's pretty cool because uh, typically if you drew a portrait and it doesn't look like a face, well, then you've done something wrong. If you do a landscape and you put the shadows in the wrong spot, well, now you've done something wrong. But if you do a doodle, you can put the forms and shapes and the shadows and texture anywhere you want. And no one can tell you, hey, this is wrong. It's just a fun way to do art, and um, it does expand your creativity. It does lead to better art. So I probably said form and texture and things like that. Shadows, I probably said that a hundred times in this video already. So I'm not going to say that anymore, maybe. But I did want to bring this up. While you watch the rest of this video, I want you to think about, have you, when you were a kid, did you ever make up weird games that didn't make any sense and if anybody saw you with you know you and your friends or relatives you know sibling whatever whoever you played games with if anyone ever saw that they thought you were a little nuts maybe uh, I had this there, there was this one game I loved to play and I was probably not more than seven or eight I know I was older than six I know I was younger than nine so I was probably around seven or eight years old and uh, I lived in a condominium and uh, maybe one, two, three buildings down around the corner and behind them, there was this big grass hill. So me and my friends used to go down to this hill and there was one friend in particular. We used to go to the top of the hill and this, this sounds a little barbaric, but just bear with me for a second. If you take your hands and you um, fold your fingers around your hands so it looks like almost like a, a a prayer situation there and you swing that like a club and we would hit each other in the back um but 
although it sounds very barbaric, you know, we were kids, we were messing around and whatever. But the idea was you, you, you knock someone down so that they roll down the hill. You start at the top of the hill on the, the steepest part and you would hit each other on the back until you fall down and you until they got to the bottom of the hill. But here's the thing. We weren't hitting each other very hard. We weren't pounding each other very hard because we were laughing so hard that if we fell, that's why we fell. It, you, we couldn't stand up because of how hard we were laughing. And uh, especially if it was a rainy day or a little bit wet, I think my heat just kicked on. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm going to try and see if I can hear that when I play this back. But uh, anyway, we were um, we would be doing that, and 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 so you'd laugh and you'd fall, and then you'd start to roll down the hill a little bit. You have to stop yourself, grab onto the hill, and no, it wasn't very very steep. But we were kids, so it could have been that steep. Then we would get up. And then the other person's coming towards you because they got to knock you the rest of the way down. And then you'd be running back up towards them and trying to knock them back down. It, it was a fun game, but I'm sure it was a little concerning to the other, to maybe some of the adults in the community that were watching us do. Maybe they thought we were really fighting, but we were hysterical. I don't know if they could think that. Maybe they thought we were on something, which we weren't. We were, we were young kids. So... Um, we were just having fun. You know, we were just we were just playing. And uh, but if you ever come up with weird things like that, just a weird game. Um, we had another game that we had a. There was this box, and we were pretty physical with each. other. We all watched wrestling, and because uh, some of us did martial arts, and we were just very physical with each other, and and you know beating each other up, play fighting. That's what they call it, play fighting. And there were these utility boxes, and in these giant boxes, um, and by giant box, I, it, was, it wasn't a giant box, it was probably about four feet by four feet, um, maybe, and there was this, it, it was wood, and there were railroad ties that stacked on top of each other, so it was pretty tall, maybe uh, two to three feet off the ground uh, from high, anyway and then it had a big lid on it and you couldn't we weren't going to fall through it it was a thick big lid and we would get up there and play like king of the hill on there um and people would be jumping on and you'd be knocking them off and or they'd be knocking you off and we play games like that and um but it's just weird it it's a moment that you created in your in your past it's a moment that you create in your your life that you can always look back on and you can always smile and remember those things and have that moment where if, if you've ever just sat back and thought about the past and thought about a really good memory and you just have that moment where you, it just makes you smile. You might be a little sad because you miss it, but really you're just, you have that moment to yourself and you just smile and you say, this is pretty cool. That was that was pretty fun. We had that moment. And I it doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, depending on how old you are, it could have been 30, 40, 50 years ago. But here's what I want to encourage you to do. Make sure that you still make time as an adult for those moments because you're still it could be 10 years from now or depending on how old you are, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now that you can live this moment again, no matter what you're doing. And I don't do that enough. I have to admit that I don't do it enough. I enjoy a lot of alone time. And, um, and I know I'm not going to go into this year, you know, this year and, and the nonsense, but there's, you can create a moment with someone now and have that for the rest of your life to think back on and and just help you smile because things get life gets busy and things get rough sometimes and you should take time for that and really um it's important it really is if you have experienced that and you know what i'm talking about you know how important it is so that's 
my advice for the day. Matter of fact, this is all been advice. So I guess this is my all of my advice for this week. And um, if you if you have anything to add, let me know. You want to add a little story? I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear what other people did. If you, if you want to add that and say, yeah, we did this when we were kids, I'd love to hear that. Um, I like hearing those kinds of stories. So, so let me know in the comments below what kind of things you did when you were a kid, what kind of memories you have. I'd love to hear just one of them. If you would like to share them with me, that would be great. Um, I'm also thinking about doing a contest. Do not have a lot of subscribers, but I'll tell you what, the subscribers I do have, um, are wonderful people. And, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch a video, hopefully be a little entertained, listen to me ramble about a bunch of nonsense. It's a wonderful thing. And, um, I was thinking about doing a little contest for the people that do listen. And, uh, I don't know what kind of art supplies you like or what kind of things you you're into but i definitely like to work something out and get something uh some kind of contest together i don't know if i'm gonna do it i'll definitely announce it here on youtube but it might be take place on instagram or facebook or somewhere where it's maybe a little bit easier to do that i'm not entirely sure yet but um i will announce it here first and let you know that it's going on so again i, I hope you had a wonderful christmas I hope you have an amazing new year. Uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you so much for being a part of what I'm trying to do. I really appreciate that. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. Bye.